So in this chapter, we're going to doing problem solving, and we want to problem solve in the same way we would um, naturally, like in the real world, or like if I'm in a grocery store and fig or I'm shopping with percentages off. So we don't really want to use any algebra here, right? We really want to use some common sense math. That's a kind of the goal. So these are the kind of problems that um, we're going to entail, like a lot of word problems. So this is a, touches on a little bit of a lot of concepts, and then we get deeper and in, further into the course. So we'll start with the first section, which is um, calculating percents. So where does percent come from, right? Like where does that word come from? Well, percent is literally the word percent meaning per a hundred, right? A hundred pennies in a dollar, right? So per cent per hundred, or we could say parts per hundred. So that's why we always say a hundred percent, you know, because there's a hun it's parts per hundred. Okay, so there are several different ways we can write percentages. For example, I just took 40% and this is equivalent to what we know usually know as 40 over 100 but since fractions are reduced and simplified there are many many infinite i mean there are many many equivalent forms of this percent 40 percent is 40 out of 100 but also 80 out of 200 which is also 10 out of 25 which is all equivalent to 40 out of 100 and we can also write um, 40% as a decimal, right? 40%, it means 40 parts per hundred, meaning 40 hundredths or 0 0.40. Okay, so in this first example, we ask um, that to find the percent of if 345 people out of 500 state they like sea turtles. So what percentage of people like sea turtles? Well, in this case, it's always a part, so 345 out of the total, which is 500 people were asked, but the part is 345 because that's the part that likes turtles. So if we go ahead and um, simplify that, we can easily just put it in the calculator and we get 0.69. Now, of course, um, if it's 0.69, right, we can rewrite it as 69 over 100. And in this case, that would be the parts per hundred, 69%. So, in general, we always write a number in a percent by moving the decimal two places. to the left, um, to the right. So anytime we have a number and we want to rewrite it as a percent, we just move it two decimal places to the right. Now some students you know, still are a little alarmed by left, right decimal, but just always remember that a percent is out of a hundred, it's a part per hundred. So in order to find a number into a percent, we have to move that decimal two places to the right. In other words, multiplying by 100. So in this case, this is where students can find it challenging. When they see a number as 14 and they want to write it as a percent, they want to say, oh, it's 14%, right? Because we usually don't see percents more than 100. But in this case, 14 is the number, like 0.69, and we have to move it two places to the right, just like we did from 0.69 to 69 percent. So if I take 14, okay, 
where is the decimal? Well, with whole numbers, the decimal is um, to the right of the ones place, right? Right here. And so therefore we move it, the decimal two places to the right. So one, two. So the decimal place is now here and put zeros where those little cups are. So this is actually 14 is actually 1400% or in other words, 1400%. So all you're doing to write a number as a percent is move the decimal over twice to the right or in other words, multiply by 100. In this case, we see the decimal is clearly right here and we can move the two decimals to the right. And now we have it, um, 0 0.02 is 2%. With 2.35, so where we clearly see the decimal, we can easily move the decimal over to the right twice. So 235%. Now, I know it's kind of alarming. You're like, no, 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 we can't have more than 100%. Yeah, some, yeah, most of the time we can't, but in real life, there are percents over 100. Like, let's just say um, you start a business and it's booming. Like Apple, it's like over, your, your revenue is over 100%, right? Your profits are over 100%. So you're constantly like doubling your money or something like that. So there are cases in the real world where we have percents over 100. Um, to see growth or decay. Um, so, but it doesn't mean the, it doesn't mean the method changes, right? Problems can change, but methods don't. So no matter what, when you're writing a number uh, to a percent, we just want to always move that decimal over to the right twice or multiply by a hundred. Okay, so let's go ahead and start problem solving. So now we have percents, we have this idea that percents are part of a whole, right? So with problem solving, as long as we have two out of the three, whatever p combination that may be, we can always find the third, right? By using, you know, the multiplication rule, or we can divide each side. So we can either say the part is equal to percent times a whole, right? By multiplying each side by this whole part. Um, and then we could always play with <clears throat> the whole part is the part over the percent and all, everything like that. So let's just take a look at the example 1.3, where it states that a TV originally priced at $7.99 is on sale 30% off. So we've all been there, right? <laughs> and um, the sales tax is 9.2%. Find the price of a TV reflecting the discount and including the sales tax. So now what you're doing is essentially going into like Best Buy and buying a TV that's 30% off and the state sales tax is 9.2. So you just want to be, you know, you're taking money out of your piggy bank. You're getting everything down to the penny. So let's go ahead and do that. So what would be the first thing we do? Do we calculate sales tax on 7.99 or do we find the discount? Like what, how do we even do that? Well, think about it. If you see a TV for 7.99 and see a 30% off sign next to it, you automatically say, oh, well, what's the discount? We never pay sales tax on the original price, right? The sales tax is at the end when they, after they do the discount and they calculate the tax, right? So the sales tax will be one of the last steps that we do. The first thing we'll want to do is definitely find that discount. So step one would be to find the discount. And there's several ways to do this. Um, the way we find the discount is actually finding the part, right? What part of this whole is 30% off, right? So if we just go ahead and say the part is equal to the percent times the original price of the TV, the whole, we would see that this percent is 30% off times the 7.99. But we don't do arithmetic operations with percents, right? We got to go ahead and move the percent back to when it was a decimal. Well, if I, in these prior examples, if I took a number and to get to a percent, move the decimal over two times to the right, then in order to get from a percent 
back to the number, I would do the opposite, right? I would move, I would either divide by 100 or uh, move the decimal place two times to the left. So once again, if I have to go from a number to the percent by moving the decimal over twice, I should be able to get from the percent back to the number by doing the opposite, right? Moving the decimal back to the left twice. So 30% in this case would be 0 0.3 times 799. Okay, so then you just, you go to your calculator because that's what you would do at the store, right? You would take your phone and you would multiply by 0.3. And therefore you get um, 239.7. So there's your part. But your part is really your discount, right? That's how much when you go to the register it's going to subtract. Okay, so what's the second part then? So now you have the discount, what does the register do next? It multiplies and then it subtracts from the, from the original price. So now um, we're going to go ahead and find the price of the TV. So that means we take the whole and subtract the discount. So all we do is take 7.99 and subtract 239.7. So let's go ahead and do that on the calculator. So now I have 7.99 minus 239.7. So we get 559.3. Now remember, this is all dollars, right? We're like, we're in America, we have dollars here. So we're gonna have everything in dollars, but right now it's just mathematics, but in arithmetic, but in the end, we're gonna be able to talk about this in dollars. So once I have the discount, it subtracts it from the whole price, and now I have this price um, of the TV, which is five $559.30. So the TV is $559.30. And now what does the register do? Now you have to pay sales tax, right? So now let's go ahead and find the sales tax. We're so lucky we have mathematicians and computer scientists to code all this in the registers. Because if you work at a store, right? Like, it's like, I, what would I be doing back in the old days? with hardly calculate we'd be on the calculator doing this right so luckily we were able to like develop algorithms for this stuff in the registers very sophisticated now okay so finding the sales tax is the same thing right you're going to take the percent of our price of the tv to get that part so here we're going to take 559 dollars and 30 cents and multiply it by the sales tax, which is 9.2%. But as we know, um, if we move the decimal back to the left twice, we get the 9.2% to be 0 0.092. So if you just put that in the calculator, right, 0 0.092, you get $51. And in this case, um, it's 0.4556, so we'll leave it. But if you wanted to round to the nearest cent, at this point you could, because everything's in dollars in the cents, so meaning like the farthest we go, we don't see prices like this in the, the price tags, right? They end at the hundreds place, so it's up to you. Um, I just usually leave it if it's only a few digits. Okay, so there's the sales tax. So the sales tax is now, if I write it in dollars and cents, I would say $51. And now if I'm rounding correctly, because here is the digit of the cents, and five, if I take the test digit, and if it's five or above, I move that digit up one. If it's below five, I leave it. So if I want to round to the nearest cent here, 
that's my digit, and my test digit is the one directly to the right of it, and it's five, then I have to round this digit up one. So it ends up being $51.46. Okay, so now the last part, part four. So now you have the tax, you have the sale price of the TV. What's your total price? The total price is the price of the TV plus the tax. So we have five fifty nine and thirty cents plus fifty one dollars and forty six cents. So if I go ahead back to the calculator and I put 559 and 30 cents plus 51 dollars and 46 cents, I get a total price of 610 dollars and 76 cents. So now the value of a car dropped from 7,400 to 6,800 over the last year. What percent decrease is this? So this always happens, right? The moment you buy a car and like it like drives one foot off the lot, it automatically goes down money, right? Cars always depreciate and it's just it's so terrible because um, some of us have really nice cars, but no matter what we do, they always depreciate. So um, in one year, obviously this car depreciated from $7,400 to $6,800, right? So we wanted to know the percent decrease. And we don't want to know, um, and we have to be careful here because we don't want to know the percentage. So some of the students say, well, just take this number over this number, and that's percent. That's actually not the percent we're looking for. We're looking for the amount of money that's been decreased or depreciated over the last year, and what is what percent of that is of the original amount. So again, let me write this out. So the goal is to find the percent decrease, which is the decrease amount of the original. Okay. So the first thing we'll want to do, again, this is problem solving, right? So we don't use algebra or anything. So the first thing we just want to say, well, how much did it depreciate? Like, that's the first thing we should find, right? So let's go ahead and find the decrease amount. Okay, so that will be $7,400, the original amount. minus 6800 okay so 7400 minus 6800 is 600 dollars okay so that's how much the car has decreased um the next part would be is to find the percent well, with the percent, again, we always do the part of the whole. So the part that decreased was $600 over the whole amount, which was $7,400. Now, I know there's two dollar amounts here, but when we always find a percent decrease or increase, we're always, we always have to use that original amount. We don't want to really use the new amount because we're using that to actually find what ha what happened when it decreased, but we always use the original amount as the base. So um, this would be, if you go ahead and go put it in your calculator, we can put 600 divided by 7400 and we get point. 081081. So it looks like it's repeating every three digits. So we'll go ahead and round to three decimal places here. So this would be point zero eight one. 
All right, and then um, at this point, uh, we can move the decimal over two times to the right. Anytime we you know, want to find a number to a percent, we move it to the right twice. So this will give us 8.1%. So the percent decrease over the last year for the value of this car was 8.1%. Or we could say like if we're in a bank, we, I would just tell the customer, right, that the car um, sorry, once again, the car's value decreased by 8.1% over the last year.